Ross, we've talked about this. You know I'm a big fan of the series anyway. I I'm devastated to hear this is going to be the last one. Mm. Yep, yep. Six series. We've been all around the world. Iraq, Syria, the Congo, Mexico. Yep, the last one. I mean, but a very good one to finish on. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I suppose I just I have to start with how I introduced you, which is, is your wife relieved it's over? <laughs> I think she quite likes to see the back of me for a bit. <laughs> no. We've always believed we've always believed in very quick goodbyes and yeah. very long hellos. And and she she met me. She was Australian. She's Australian. She is Australian. Um, she's a lawyer. She was going back to Australia to take up partnership. And for some unknown reason, she met me and she decided to stay. But she'd never seen EastEnders, so she was not familiar with that. So she's all, as long as she's known me, I've been travelling around the world, yeah. Uh, but there have been occasions, though, uh, Ross, where it's got very, very scary. And perhaps you know, you've heard our post getting back that you, you were closer to getting into sort of being kidnapped yeah. or getting into more trouble than you realised. Yeah, we had the Foreign Commonwealth Office um, let us know that um, particularly a female director, Marta Shaw, who was... Was, was out in Libya when we were making the last programme in this series, that she was being seriously targeted to be lifted, to be taken as a hostage. Oh, yeah. that's just... She's a very brave lady. Very brave and, lady. And, and then, but then when you sort of... You, you weigh up the reality of that and you sit down and you've got children and you've got a wife, is there any point when you kind of think, I'm not sure it's worth that risk? I think you get into such a habit doing it um, and such a rhythm. You know, I meet the guys and the girls, if, it's, if Marta's on the job, um, at the airport, we have a big hug, we go to work, and then we say goodbye to each other and we go home to our families. And that's the routine. And, you know, when I was in EastEnders, I used to get mm -hmm. in the car and drive up the A41 to L Street, work there, it's and then come home. It's not quite the same, it's though, is it? It's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, there are a few moment. differences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, in terms of going and putting on a cloak and becoming someone else, it's all of the same, you know, when you're acting, you go there, you, you play that part, you drop that part, you become yourself and you, get, you, you mm. get home as quickly as possible to your family. And obviously you find yourself in some really difficult situations, very emotional situations. How, how difficult is it for you on a human level to not wade in and try and do something about it personally? It, over the series it's been really hard and the hardest for me was in India when I met somebody that was trafficking young girls for sex and he, on camera, and I didn't know he was going to do it, admitted to killing around 300 of them. And that, and my translator heard it first, she started crying, and then he started crying, and I got so angry because he started to feel sorry for himself. Yeah. And I don't mind meeting bad people and interviewing them, but when they start feeling sorry for themselves, the things that they do, mm. that's the only time I really, really nearly lost it. Mm. What did you do? I mean, how, how does that sort of pan out in terms of continuing the interview or continuing the relationship with the well, film? I, I terminated the, the yeah. interview and I said, get him out of my sight before I kill him, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, he had armed guards with him, so I wasn't probably going to be able so to do that. What, what but yeah, but that, that's the only time. But you meet, also meet some fantastically positive people mm. over the years, particularly in the Congo, Dr McQuake, uh, you know, saving women who have been brutalised by the war that was going on there at the time. So, you know, I think the positive people far outweigh the negative people that mm. I've met over the years. And, and on the most recent series, the series going out, you found yourself in the middle of a race riot in Texas. How? I mean, a Texas just after America... the election. So yeah. Trump just got just be, just just won the election. When I actually eventually started interviewing the, the anti demonstrators, I was called a, 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 a journalist fag. Yeah. <laughs> so you got labelled three times very quickly, yeah. depending yeah. on who you were speaking right, to. Really. So, yeah, yeah, the interesting thing, as Amanda was saying, we kind of consider America to be a very a relatively stable environment mm. that you could go to, but this was happening in Texas. In a, yeah. in a, and in and a the fact is that both demonstrators on both sides had assault rifles. You know, it's, they were carrying 200 rounds of ammunition each. Mm. Gosh. Just breathtaking. It's insane. So what happens to Extreme World? Because there's, there's more, I'm sure, exploring you want to do. What would you like to see happen to the series now? Uh, you know, we'd, we'd obviously like to carry on in some form, who knows where. Um, we could do with a bit of a holiday. <laughs> it's, been a bit, it's been a bit of a long year. But, um, you know, I, I'm really proud of the series and proud of, of all the support that Sky have given us. Um, they've, been, they've been great to work for, and hopefully I'll, maybe I'll carry on working with them in the future. But this is an amazing topic, isn't it? And I, I personally think it would do well on a... One of those, on a streaming service, on a Netflix streaming or Amazon service Prime. Or Ama yeah, do you know, know what? You, you're my agents now, guys. Yeah, yes, you know we'll what? You. Let's we'll sort the deal out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you, are, you can have the 15% as well if you do. <laughs> more acting, though, Ross, will it give you a chance to maybe do a bit oh, more acting? Do you know what? I think you never say never. Say never mm -hmm. in, our, in our line of work, you know. Um, may present a game show, may, um, may go back to acting. 
I hopefully carry on making documentaries because it Absolutely. is my passion. Yeah. And you know, and I think yeah, I'm incredibly lucky to do something that I feel so passionate about. And you have raised so much awareness in areas that people have been so completely unfamiliar with. So well, well done. Thank you so Honestly, much. Honestly, best of luck with this series. It's an absolute treat to see you as ever. I'm thank sure it'll you. be an absolute cracker as it. Thank often you. Is.